the Elgato Stream Deck. This thing looks pretty fucking awesome. Uh, mostly targeted towards, uh, but not limited to, uh, live streamers. Um, it's basically just a little macro keyboard, uh, which you can customize the keys and the layouts uh, to suit your needs. Give yourself uh, quick access to, to certain key features of uh, whatever program you want to um, program it towards. It is pretty expensive though. Um, it's going for about uh, $200 here in Australia. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to make your own macro keyboard uh, for under $10. Admittedly, this isn't going to be as flash as the Elgato Stream Deck. You, know, you don't get your LED backlit uh, keys and you don't have the screen uh, on the keys either. Uh, this is just a cheap number pad that I picked up online from GearBest. But with the right software, I can program each key to do basically whatever I want it to do. Alright, so let's get started. The program I'm going to use to program this keyboard is HID Macros or HID Macros. Uh, so if you go ahead and open it up, you'll see the program here. Um, there is a little bit of know-how required to set this up, because it does use VBScript to program some of its keys. Uh, it does have a help tab here, which lists a lot of the, the commands and program keystrokes that you can use so if I head over to macros here uh, I'll just create a new one we'll call this Chrome um, and then if I hit scan it'll want me to select the key on the keyboard so I'm going to hit the zero button Now that's mapped to that um, macro name. Um, so now what I need to do is go down to here, go down to run application, and then find Chrome. Hit compile all save configuration and now if I press the zero key I'll open up Chrome now you can uh, make it do a lot of other cool things um, one thing that I like to set it to do is uh, with Windows 10 you've got the multiple desktops here and to cycle between them if you press control windows key left or right it swaps the desktop that you're on so i like to set up a macro to do that without pressing control windows key and the left or right buttons so i'll call this desktop left and i'll set this button to be number four now for this one here we want to go down to scripted and what we need to type in here is send keys space quotations you need the little up arrow hash um, symbolizes the windows key the up arrow symbolizes the control button and then in the curly brackets here if we type in left and then close it off with the quotations again now you're down the bottom here you can see not compiled so what I'll go and do is hit compile uh, next I'll create another macro and call it desktop right and I'll go and map that to the button number six same again I'll go down to scripted type in send keys quotations 
up arrow to be control, hash button to be windows, and then in the curly brackets, type right. Hit compile, save configuration. Now when I hit these buttons, Looks like I had a space there. Um, remove the space. There we go. If I press 6, you will swap over to the right desktop. If I press 4, you will swap over to the left desktop. Now, to begin with, I had a space between the hash and the curly brackets. Um, I needed to remove that for that uh, piece of code to work. Um, now, a cool thing about using the number pad as well is you obviously have the number lock, which allows you to, to use different buttons there. So, at the moment, I've mapped 6 and 4 to the desktop here. So, if I go ahead and press number lock and press 6 and 4 again, that's not going to work. And you can you can map all of these keys um, to do anything you want. Hit number lock and then remap them as something else. So just for the just for the sake of the video, I'm going to map number four to Fubar. Scan. Hit button number four. Down the bottom here. Run application. On my desktop, I've got Fubar. And then hit Save Configuration. Now if I press the 4 button, Fubar should open up. If I go ahead and press Number Lock, I can then use the desktop function. Go and press Number Lock. Close down Fubar. Press 4 again and it opens. Now another another macro I normally like to set is one to open up this PC. I'll go ahead and scan that button. I will make it the backspace button. Basically what you want to do is go to the command prompt, which is on your C drive, Windows, System32, and cmd.exe. Uh, and that's not all. Uh, what else you want to put in here is space forward slash C, and then in quotations, explorer.exe space equals and then quotations again. Now this command here, explorer.exe space equals is what opens up this PC. So if I go ahead and save that configuration and I'll now press the backspace key it'll open up this PC. Now one thing um, I should note as well is it does bring up the command prompt um, so you do see the command prompt flash a little bit right before it pops up. You can hide that. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail uh, on how to do that, um, but there is some programs out there that allow you to run the command prompts uh, or command lines without uh, a command window popping up. You can also set this to to do your volume as well. Um, so what if we do mute volume, hit scan, I'll map that to the delete key. Uh, and then what you want to do is go into scripted. Uh, I don't know the code off the top of my head, but I have it saved here. 
it's basically just some VB script. So go ahead and copy that. I'll leave those on screen um, if you want to copy those. Um, basically you've got mute, volume down, volume up. Uh, so you can pause the video there if you want to see the code for those. Um, so if I go ahead and put that in here, hit compile, type configuration. Now if I press the delete key, you can see that Windows has now muted the volume. Press it again, it's now unmuted. Uh, same goes for volume up and down. So if I go volume up, and I'll make this the plus symbol. Go over the scripted, copy the volume up. Same with volume down. Make this the minus key. Save configuration. I'll compile that first. Save configuration. Now if I press the minus key, Windows volume goes down. If I press the plus key, Windows volume goes up. And mute. Uh, you probably can set this keyboard to do media keys as well. Um, but I already have some media keys so I'm not going to do that in this video. Eventually when I have all these keys mapped out to, to what I want um, and I'm happy with what I've got set for them, um, probably what I will do is create some custom labels. Um, these keys are flat, I don't know if you can see that, they are flat so I can stick stickers on them with uh, my own logos for icons and uh, programs. Just so you know what uh, what each button does, rather than going off memory or, or having to look at uh, hidden macros. Now you can uh, use this on your existing keyboard. You don't need to have an additional keyboard for this to work. As you can see here, um, it detects two keyboards and a mouse. Um, one being the default keyboard that I use, and the other being the number pad. So you're not limited to additional keypads or anything like that, uh, you can use your existing keyboard um, and remap keys. Another handy macro to set is Alt F4. Um, you can use this to close down applications that you no longer want open. Um, so I'll go ahead and create a new one. Call it Alt F4. Hit scan. I'll map it to the star button on my keypad. Uh, go down to scripted. Type in send keys, space quotations, percent uh, is what's used for the alt key, and then curly brackets, F4, close curly brackets, and then quotations. I'll hit compile, save configuration. Um, I'll go ahead and open up a program and test out the close button. There you go. One thing you will want to do is uh, put this program into a startup so it uh, starts up when Windows does. Um, if you want to get a little bit more fancy uh, you can also create a, a scheduled script um, that basically checks that the program's running um, and does nothing if it is um, and if it's not running basically just starts the application um, and you can have that on a, a schedule that runs periodically. Um, just in case Windows does its uh, bullshit thing and uh, closes the application for whatever reason. Um, but that's that. I hope that video helps you. Um, if it does help you, um, please hit the like button or post a comment below. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I'll do my best to answer um, each question. Um, I'm not a professional scripter or anything like that. Um, I just know what I know. Um, from loads and loads of research um, but I'm happy to help if, uh, if you've got a question feel free to put it in the comment section below